Welcome, Impactful Parents. Today, we're going to be talking about how single dads are better than single moms at parenting. I know. I just found this out, too. It blew my mind. Hello, my name is Christina Campos, and I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and I help parents of school-age children who want to stay one step ahead of their kids to turn their chaos into connection with their adolescent. I'm a mom of four. I'm a teacher that has taught every grade from preschool through high school, and today I help moms and dads like yourself to navigate that exhausting, confusing, and frustrating, but rewarding world of parenting. So welcome to The Impactful Parent. And today I also have my co-host with me today, Rodrigo Bravo. And Rodrigo is a co-parenting mediator out of the state of Texas. He is a parenting coach and he is a dad of two boys. Rodrigo brings a dad's perspective onto the impactful parent stage to give you even more expertise and an added perspective to our parenting topics. I am super excited to talk about this today because it blew my mind. So Rodrigo, welcome. Did you know that dad's actually single single dads fare better at parenting than single moms uh i think that's a loaded statement you just said right now so let's let's tread carefully before we start dissecting this and see what it's all about but uh but i did know that there's some statistics out there that show that there's uh uh, uh some some differences between the levels of uh, parenting, I guess, you know, whether on the socioeconomic front uh, or, or, you know, so forth. So, I, I, but I want to be careful treading along that. So definitely I recommend folks watch the video first, just like we did and kind of like see what she says. And then we're going to talk about it. Let's present that video now. Six. Women get custody yeah. because the court system favors them. No, but okay. And but, and, but, and 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 I'll tell you what. Go on. And men are punished for being traditional in this country. They yes. are because the way the court system and, and see this. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this because I know things. I'm like, the code is written. It's basically the person that spends the most time with the child. Yeah. Well, who do, if a man wants to protect and provide for his family, who does that punish? The guy for doing the right thing. But the children spend more time with the mothers. Sometimes and, men are not as involved. Correct. So correct. It's but the but it's because, children that want to go right, with them. It's and, because yeah. they're at work, though. Yeah. But and, and okay. then if you look at let's let's talk about let's what's in the best interest of the child. When you look at single father homes, they they fare very similar to two parent households. When you look at okay. single mother homes, they become criminals. I didn't know that. Yeah. They become criminals, drug dealers, school shooters. Every really problem that you can look at in society comes from single mother homes. Single father homes, not the same. What's the new? And it's true, somewhat, like you said. Research is there. Single mom households actually do have worse grades, more suicide, more depression, more anxiety, worse graduation rates, more criminal offenses, like all this bad stuff. Um, so it just, it, it really, it shocked me. But this is what I found. Having two parents together is always the best scenario. But with single dads, the number of single father households, it has been increasing over the years. And in 2019, around 7% of all U.S. households with children um, were headed by single fathers. Now, only 7% in 2019. So that's not a ton, as we know. But there was a study by Amato Gilbreth in 1999 that found that children in single father households tend to have higher academic achievement and exhibit fewer behavioral problems compared to those of single mother households. And lastly, there is this other uh, research by um, O'Keefe, a guy named O'Keefe and Boss, in 2014 that suggested that children raised by single fathers may have better mental health outcomes compared to those of single mother households. But it still brings me back to this overall arching theme that if you were to compare a single mother household and a single father household, the chances of the single father household to have that type of what we consider successful child. So maybe a child that, you know, goes to school, is a good person in society, doesn't have a criminal record. 
is actually much more common or the odds are better in the single father household. And it still, it, it just surprises me, but I want to explore this because why? Like, why would that actually be? Uh, I don't know. Give me your first thoughts on this. What? Why are these statistics the way they are? And for me, I immediately go into, okay, the resources. What's the resource allocation between both groups? However, like you said, single parent households are on the rise. Uh, why is that? Uh, there's a number of factors, but I would say, and I would argue that the vast majority of it is because uh, fathers now have more resources, right? And the uh, courts are more willing to look at the bigger picture. And I think, I think one of the things though, when you look at this particular statistic is that when, when we talk about men that do get custody, you're talking about men that have resources to go to court, to get the, get those rights, fight for those rights and challenge those rights. Uh, you know, most men, and I'll even put myself in that category, I didn't necessarily have the resources to do that. Uh, the state of Texas, at least here in Texas, they provide legal representation for moms. So if, you know, a, a non-custodial uh, father is late on child support, for example. Uh, she doesn't have to go out there and hire a lawyer. She doesn't have to look for resources. No, she just said, that, you know, she calls the OAG, the, the Office of the Attorney General, says, hey, he hasn't paid child support or it didn't go through, you know, and boom, the office starts working on her behalf. On the flip side, if there's ever some type of custodial issue or something that, I, you know, that, that, hey, you know, she's, denying me, you know, my, my visitation, this and that. I don't get that same luxury, if you will. But 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 I can't go to the Texas uh, Attorney General and, and 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 make a statement and say, hey, I need help with this and that. They'll just be like, oh, that's a civil matter. You know, you're going to have to uh, plead your case with the courts. And now you're asking me, uh, uh, a father of two, to represent himself pro se in a court setting that I have zero familiarity with. And so I, I, going back to my original point, I think fathers that have custody of their kids, full-time custody, are typically those that do have those resources, that have access to lawyers, that have access to, to those resources so they can fight for the custody and eventually you know, win that out. That usually means that they already have resources too. That usually means that they have you know, money to, to, to spend there to do that. You know? And so I think there's a variety of factors going on there that where... Uh, men are already in a kind of position where they can provide benefits that are, are not as, uh, I guess, hard fought, if you will, for moms, you know, that are starting off. And then the last point I make, and I know I just went over on that one, but the last point I make is that uh, I, I find it, I always find it funny, and maybe this is just a pet peeve of mine, but I always find it funny when we blame single parent moms for the households. And we, we, you know, there, there's a lot of times there's also an absentee father. We're not even talking about single parent mom and non custodial father. We're talking about single parent mom with a completely absent father. Those don't bear out in the stats. And so, you know, you're talking about moms now that have to basically do play double time when it comes to the father role. And so there, there's a variety of things there. And I think, I think initially when I heard that, I did have some disbelief. But I also knew that those stats can be kind of skewed a little bit, depending on the perspective that you take. I hope I didn't take too long. Well, I know I took too long, but uh, that, that's the kind of the, the, the idea that I had when I first uh, uh, saw that video. I think that you make some really good points about how the statistics are just depending on how you look at things. And one of the things that you said I want to note is when you're talking about single moms, is it just, is a single mom like like me, where I'm a single mom, I'm not married, I'm divorced, and I have four children, and I'm trying to raise them on my own, but their dad is definitely still in their life. And you can't compare me to a mom who got completely abandoned. She's literally with her four children all by herself, trying to, you know, do everything, play both roles of both parents, 
I just think that's like apples and oranges. I don't compare myself to that type of single mother because I'm way more fortunate than that by having um, their dad still in their life. He's an active person, even though, yes, the kids are with me grand majority of the time. And if you've seen any of our other episodes, you know, we're not really 50-50. I have them most of the time, but he's still there. He still comes and visits. He's a presence. He's an influence. So you can't, I'm not the same as a mom who doesn't get that. And yet it seems like these statistics, I'm wondering like, is there a difference in what we're seeing in statistics? Because mm, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to me like that's accurate. It, it's super important to understand that there's so many different uh, factors that go along with that. Uh, and I think that's a great example that you just gave right now that, you know, uh, um, you, you, you are classified uh, if, if we had to like, you know, kind of benchmark you as a single mom. Right. Yeah. And, and, but your, your circumstance is way different based on the work that I've done and with, uh, with the folks that I've worked with, I definitely can see where single moms, have had much more of a burden and therefore don't have kind of quote unquote the free time or the luxury to be doing other things. You know, when, when you're taking care of kids 24 seven, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really tough. And you, you know, I, I don't, I acknowledge that I, I, I was a co-parent, a uh, non-custodial parent for both of my boys, but at the same time, I recognized, wow, you know, that switch for, for my, my, uh, my boys' moms never really turned off, even when when they the boys were with me, as opposed to like when I had the boys, I dropped them off at Sunday at six, and I'm over here going out, I'm over here you know partying whatever you know I'm I'm relaxing this and that the switch was off. You were relaxing. Yeah, single yeah, moms yeah. don't relax, Rodrigo. <laughs> and, and so and so I I think that also kind of plays into that you know where where. So, you know, single moms don't have that kind of luxury to do that. And single dads, a lot of times, and oh, that's one thing I wanted to mention on the Pew Research. They mentioned in that article uh, on the study that over, over, I think it was 56% of the dads, single dads, actually co cohabitate with somebody else. And so, they, they you know, they, they, yeah, they're single dads, but apparently there's somebody else there, you know. That, that again, that makes that plays a big difference. You know, you're talking about more than half of the dads have a support system there. You know, that makes a big difference. You know, I didn't have to find a babysitter. I didn't have to how much it's going to cost and do like a ROI. You know, it, it's just ridiculous. You know, what, what you have to do as a single mom, as a single parent that has to go through those kind of financial considerations, time considerations, and maybe not be able to spend extra time doing something else. So I think I think I think it is kind of skewed. I think there's different ways to look at it, but in the end, I, I really don't. Uh, I got to be honest. I don't subscribe to the whole theory. You know, like oh, automatically single dads are better than single moms. I, I really think it's more of a case by case basis. Well, I love that you advocate for single moms and that you're. Um, I mean, you just said some really wonderful things about single moms and the empathy there. I just uh, thank you for that. Um, and I'm going to say, I think single dads get the short end of the stick a lot and mm -hmm. should have more opportunity to be single fathers um, when the mom is not at her best. You also talked about um, these situations about um, there being a female in the man's household. And I want to elaborate on that because as you're talking, one of the things that I was thinking was, Devil's advocate, let's say somebody out there is like, yes, I agreed with that video. And single moms are not as proficient at parenting as single dads. So then it poses the questions, how can mothers improve? But one of the things that I think that plays a big role in that is that it is undeniable in any kind of research that having the presence of both your parents a female and a male or just two parents in the household is the best thing for the child, right? And so if having both male and female role models in a child's life is that important and statistically gives the best chance for success of upbringing, then 
it's so much easier for a father to fill up a child's life with a positive woman influence than it is for a mother to fill up a child's life with a positive man influence. Like it just, it, in my opinion, I really believe that because a single dad who is strong and stable and, and financial is so much more desirable for a female equivalent, you know? And the value of women, unfortunately, and I hate this, is held in our beauty and, and her body and her fertility. And all that goes away when you're a mom. Well, not maybe not all of it goes, but you know, it, it definitely hurts as we get older as women and our value gets less perceived as we as we grow older and as we have children and again if we get divorced so since children benefit the most from having equal amounts of female and male influences in their lives it seems to me like it's so much easier to hit that balance for a man to find another female to come into the life and play that role model than it is for a woman to find a good man to come in and be that role model. Even like, even if we can't find a romantic partner, teachers, the majority of teachers are female. And so even if he's the single father at home, he sends his kid off to school, there's a high probability that the teacher is a female teacher and is being that in place role model that's female role model in that child's life. And again, women don't get that. There's not a lot of male teachers out there. So I just feel like hitting that balance for women is just so much harder and it's it's just not fair. That's a great point. That's a great point, Christina. And I'm glad you brought that up, especially because, you know, using our real life experiences or, you know, you and I, I'm sure you felt that. I'm sure you, you, you went through that and, and you understand that a little bit more than, you know, maybe somebody else that is just listening in, isn't a parent or isn't a single parent or, or whatnot. And I know for a fact that what you said is 100 percent correct. I know that when I was a, or am a, was a single father there in those in those, you know, in the quote unquote dating pool or, you know, with my partners and so forth. You know, there, there was is a huge difference, huge, huge difference between my single parenthoodness, if you will, and my partner's single parenthoodness, where, you know, mine was seen as more of a, OK, yeah, he has two kids, but it's OK. You know, this and that. And look, he's you know, he's got a great job now and he's doing this, he's doing that. Oh, and he sees him on the weekends and this, this and that. Right. That's the viewpoint. And, and and for both women and men, right? They're both seeing that. And so you you just, I think you just hit, you made a really fantastic statement there where there's a clear difference between the two roles uh, that really statistics doesn't capture. You know, we, we, we can talk all the stats you want, but when it comes to the real lived experience of folks that have been a single parent, particular single parent mom, single moms, it's much more difficult. The, 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 the contrast between a single parent mom and a single parent dad is way different. I don't like those type of divisive videos because a lot of times, you know, they're, they're definitely skewed. They're giving a perspective. I almost feel like they're propaganda, even because they use truthful information. You know, all that information you cited right now is 100 percent accurate, but it's leading to the wrong conclusion. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, or, or at least the wrong uh, insinuation that ki children are automatically better or should be better off with their fathers as opposed to their mothers. You know, every case is different. Um, one last thing I wanted to note about the 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 video too was that it was a, a young lady that was you know saying these stats. Did that change your mind or did that like you know like say anything to you? Because to me, when I see these videos. Honestly, it's usually like a like like a like a, a, a guy, you know, that's saying like like single dads deserve the rights and this, this and that and uh, and I know I sound mocking, okay, and I apologize to all the single dads out there, uh, and I and I get it, you know, and, and you probably think like oh my god, you know, he's he's out here caping for for single moms or like you know whatever, right? But the fact of the matter is that every time you know right. in my practice, anecdotally, 
and also the stats bear out, you know, we, we guys have it easy. We really do have it easy. So I'm not here to like, just, you know, beat on the bush, you know, and, and try to make it like men or the bad guys or anything like that. To the contrary, I think there are things that do need to be fixed for men. For example, custodial issues that, you know, we don't have that support when we do have custodial issues. I think a hundred percent that needs to be revamped. But anyways, getting back to the video, usually I see guys that are doing those videos, right? There's a check these facts out, you know, men are better at this, men are better at that, you know, and they, they have the little list here and they go, you know, point by point, this and that. But then, you know, when you, you sent me, when we were seeing the video and it's a lady and, and she's, you know, over here, like, you know, busting out these facts, it really kind of messed with me a little bit. <laughs> it really kind of made me like, like, just look at, you know, even just the presentation of that. Did that have any effect to you? Like, did you, were you prepared for that, Christina? I think that's why I had to pause and why we're even doing this because it did impact me more. If it was a dude who is like, like you said, saying single dads, single dads, come on. I would have just been like, oh, more single dads just try, you know, and not to say that that's not important, but it doesn't hit at home as much as a woman advocating for the single dads. And so it did make me pause and watch the video. And then fact check it. And yeah, that's why we're here. So definitely part of the influence of how that video was impactful. Did you read any of the comments on the video? I didn't do that, no. No. So I read a, a couple of the comments. And uh, and uh, I'm, again, you're gonna it's a broken record, right? But it was part of that crowd, you know, and, and one of the comments did bother me where it said like, you know, Na see, men are naturally better than women. And so, you know, and, and all it's just one comment from some rando on, a, you know, on, on Instagram. But that's the type of things that I really, these type of videos, they bother me because they spread this narrative. And yes, there's sprinklings of truth here and there. But there's also this larger narrative going on of, no, you know, women are not as good as men even in the or or in the parenting realm you know you know and and it's stuff like that like that particular comment that i feel is just you know just creating further divide goes right to somebody that quite honestly is not open to to ideas but probably looking for confirmation bias and this type of video hits them you know it, that's the type of video they want as soon as that video comes up, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Playing a little devil's advocate with you. Okay. Um, I'm going to say there are certain things that men typically do better with parenting than women. And I'm not saying that men, that I'm super agreeing with the statistic, but I do feel that fathers present children with better stability in a lot of different ways. Well, maybe not a lot of different ways, but definitely financial stability. They tend to be just more financially stable. And not to say a woman can't be that. So I'm talking in big generalizations because I feel I'm financially stable and I'm pretty uh, emotionally stable. So I would uh, disagree for myself. But in general, those two things really do make a difference in parenting. I mean, fathers, they don't coddle their children as much as women do. And they do more of this preparing, like tough love, which prepares them for real life a little bit more than maybe a mother who's coddling and, you know, trying to make sure that their kid doesn't get their feelings hurt all the time. I think that fathers, that brings a certain value to how a child's raised and whether or not they're prepared for the real world. Um, so emotionally and financially, if the child's not struggling quite as much, uh, and it's just statistically known that men make more money, right, then that's going to make a big difference in upbringing. And fathers are better at laying down ground rules and then not budging. So they're good at boundaries. And so, again, very general, but they do have some attributes that could be presented as better in the parenting realm. So, so <clears throat> I, I would agree that uh, men are perfectly capable of doing everything that women can do and that women can do pretty much anything men can do. 
uh, I, I, I generally see in my practice that it's, uh, I, I would say about 90%, Christina, where it's the men that are emotionally not in charge. Interesting. And yes, absolutely. You know, they've well, gone. I'm going to stop you for a second. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. ask you about that because I guess I may have phrased that wrong. When I mean emotional, like, it's, yeah, I agree. They don't have as much emotional control, actually. And maybe I'm just miss, I'm just not saying it right. But I do feel like men can be more emotionally, it's not stable, but predictable. And it's the predictability that helps in parenting. Because even if you have a father that rages, if you know what his triggers are as a child, you can nav you learn to navigate that and you learn, will learn to work around it versus females that could be more emotionally sporadic and a little bit harder to figure out if for a child. And I just wanted your take on that because that's really, I think, much more of what I was meaning to say about emotional stability with men, like that it's more predictable for a child so then they can navigate it better. I think I think what you're getting at is actually emotional consistency. Yeah, maybe you that's know? it. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where you know, you you know how dad's gonna react, you know, as opposed to maybe how mom's gonna react. You know, I know, I know. When you put when we frame it that way, I definitely do understand that because I was raised in that kind of household where my dad did was a fire breather and you know raged and was getting mad and so forth. But my mom was unpredictable, you know. Sometimes she was nice. Sometimes she was kind. Sometimes she was my dad's cheerleader. Sometimes, you know, she, you know, I, I thought I could confide in her, and it turns out she told my dad, you know. And so, so it, it can definitely be. Uh, I, I think anecdotally, in that with my lived experience, I can definitely see what you're talking about in that sense, where my 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 uh, my parents definitely fit that model, um, you know. But but again, in my practice, you know, I do feel that that I've, I've i've helped out enough parents that i can tell you know that a lot of times the majority of the times you know the gentlemen are dealing still with a lot of pain and this and that and again it's stigma right you know we're, we're you know guys aren't supposed to be in tune with their emotions they're not supposed to get therapy they're not supposed to do this and that so obviously they you know a lot of times they don't know how to handle their emotions you know and why because they don't have the right tools you know, the, the only tools they know is the way their parents, you know, parent it. You know, you, you, you always talk about like, you know, people, you know, the reason you do this is because you want to teach people to parent better than Abuelita, you know, and that's not because Abuelita was a bad person or this and that. It's just that she did what she could with what she knew. And so I think a lot of times the folks that I help out with, particularly the men, you know, it's, it's really they're doing the best that they can with what with what they have and what they know i don't necessarily blame them because it's tough it's tough and then when you have stigmas we were talking earlier about society and its views towards women it certainly affects men too where men were not supposed to talk about our emotions and men were supposed to be tough and and we, we can't show emotions and this and that and and uh, i think i shared this story already but i think it's kind of uh, a nice little uh kind of closing thought if you will where you know, I had one one father tell me like he was having a bad day and his daughter caught on and, you know, he said, oh, it's OK. You know, everything's fine. Da, da, da. And I told him, why are you lying to your daughter? And he goes, well, what do you mean? You know, I'm protecting her. I go, no, you're, you're not protecting her. Actually, you're lying to her. She's your loved one. Right. He goes, of course. Then why would you lie to a loved one? You know, now I'm not saying that like, you got to spill the beans to her and tell her like, yeah, you know, my girlfriend cheated on me and my boss, you know, gave me a demerit or whatever. You don't have to go through all that. But you just simply say, like, hey, baby, I, I had a tough day today. Today was a tough day, but I'm really glad to be here. So if I'm a little down, I'm sorry, but it's okay. You know, let's have some fun or something. And one day he called me out of the blue. This was weeks later. I think even months later. He called me out of the blue and he told me, and he was like, I could still hear him, like, just, like, emotionally, like, uh, not exhausted, but just like going through that whole emotion. And he told me, he goes, man, I just had a moment. And he said, like, he was having a rough day. He picked up his daughter and he told his daughter just that. He goes, you know, she says, hey, what's wrong, daddy? 
And he said, like, oh, I'm just thinking about a lot of things, baby girl. You know, it's just it was a rough day today, you know, and I had this happen. And but it's okay, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy because I got to pick you up. And his daughter, you know, got with him, you know, leaned over and gave him a hug and said, It's okay, Daddy, we'll get through this together. And it, it just like killed him. I mean, not killed him. It just like, like, wow. Yeah. You know, like it and it just showed, you know, that he was teaching his daughter. Like, hey, it's okay to have issues, but how do we handle these issues? Well, we, we handled them by not letting them overtake us. And the other thing he did was show perspective. You know, he told his daughter, like, yeah, I'm having a bad day, but guess what? It's actually a good day because I got to see you today. So it's teaching her how to cope with those emotions. And then what did she do? She said, hey, we got this. And what else could a father or a mother want than your kids really just saying, like, hey, it's, it's okay. We, we got this together. I thought it was great, and I thought it was a, a great way of showing how, like, uh, you know, a father, by being honest and showing emotional vulnerability to their child, that they're really being the best father that they can be for their child. The predictability of how your parent is going to react is huge in helping mental health with children, and we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an interesting example you did because it kind of brings us also back to, all right. It was a father who learned how to be emotionally stable and a role model to his daughter. So it was very impactful. Same scenario presented with a woman. Would it just be normal? <laughs> like, would that just be not as impactful as she would have done exactly the same thing? Is that is that just expected because she's female? Ooh, and we're more question. in tune to ourselves <laughs> because you were talking about how, oh, it's a girl that made, she, she's the one who gave the statistics. That was so much more impactful because she was a woman. And in this case, this is so much more impactful because it was a man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think it's because, again, we're, we're talking about how society has conditioned us and we have these implicit biases and we have these internal ideas of what things should be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear, a young lady talking about father statistics, it kind of creates this little slight, you know, uh, dissonance, right? That you kind of questioning yourself. And the same thing with that one, you know, because the guy, he was obviously, you know, when, when he first told me, he's like, well, no, I want to be tough for my daughter, you know? Da, da, da. You know, that's what he grew up with, you know? And I'm sure, you know, in his household, men don't cry, you know? And, you know, we, we don't we don't talk about our problems, you know? We just toughen up, you know? And, and, and he realized, you know, like, hey, if I want to, like, kind of break this generational curse of emotional uh, instability, you know, I got to start with me, you know, and he, and he took my, and again, I'm not a licensed professional counselor. You know, I want to make that a hundred percent clear. I've been through my own mental health journey. And so I do tell folks like, Hey, you know, maybe you should consider, you know, I don't know your mental wellness journey, going through therapy, et cetera. And on occasion I share my own toolkit, but my toolkit is for me. You know, I can't tell everybody, you know, use my toolkit for your problems. You, you might have some other issues you got to deal with. But in that case, I was giving them something that I would do, you know, that I would say, like, like, you know, you can't hide. Kids are smart. Kids will figure things out. And so when they see that, they read that, and they read that you're having a tough time, the last thing you want to do is tell them, A, you're wrong, and B, lie to them. You know, that's just, you're, you're creating a dissonance for them. Now they're thinking, like, well, okay, that's weird. So yeah, you're right. You know, when you when I when I share that story, and I didn't even realize that right now until you pointed that out, that I do share that story quite a bit. And I'm pretty sure, and again, going to biases, right? But I'm pretty sure I've heard that same story from a from a single mom's perspective. And I probably haven't shared that not not only nearly as often, but probably I've never shared it that way. Yeah. You know, and that's uh yeah. You make me feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Because every that's, that's no, how we all are. Weird. Like it's You're crazy. Right. You're right. I'm gonna end with asking uh, a couple uh, two part question to you um, that I thought was intriguing too as you're talking, because as more same sex partners are becoming parents, I wonder how we as a society will evolve and change in this respect, when we have 
you know, two dads or two moms and they get divorced and who's going to get the custody and how is that going to look? And everything that we've been talking about, it just like throws that wrench in there because we are evolving that way. There's a lot more same sex partners becoming parents. And to that extent, you know, how does gender biases influence custody decisions in the United States? Because it's going to affect those same sex partners, maybe. And that's okay. I don't think we have to have answers. I just, I think it's interesting to pose the question and mm -hmm. see if people have comments about it. And so let's, let's hear what people think about that. Any final thoughts on what we talked about today, Rodrigo? Yeah, I, I want to challenge folks that when they see videos like that to really kind of look into themselves first and see what kind of uh, possible biases you have towards, you know, videos like that or anything that you see online uh, and challenge yourself. I, I think that's really the most important thing, you know, challenge yourself, uh, not necessarily to agree with everything, you know, that's not going to happen, but to accept the possibility that something is different or something is not what you thought it was. Because I definitely, you know, when I saw these stats and everything, I knew they were like this, but I didn't know it was so such a significant difference between the two. And I think that's good. I think that's really good. I'm glad that, you know, you shared that with me and that we were able to talk about it because in the end, that's the only way we really grow, right? By, by learning and by kind of, you know, accepting that maybe I was wrong on something and, you know, let, let's, let's see why and let's get some more information and then draw conclusions from there. So that's what I would do. I would, I would challenge folks, you know, to, to really uh, challenge themselves, uh, both from a knowledge standpoint, but also from a parenting standpoint. While research provides valuable insights, it's still important to note that the impact of single mother or single father households on children can be influenced by a variety of factors, of course, including quality of parenting, social economic status, and individual children's characteristics, um, just because every kid is different, right? But both single mother and single father households can provide nurturing environments for children. Start your impactful parent journey by downloading the Impactful Parent app. The Impactful Parent app is free, so you can carry help, tips, and parenting resources right in your pocket. Download the app today. You got nothing to lose since it's a free download. So go to theimpactfulparent.com or your phone's app store and search Impactful Parent, and then discover how you can step up your parenting game and become a more impactful parent. If you would like to reach out to Rodrigo Bravo for his co-parenting mediation and coaching services, you can email him at rodrigobravojr at gmail.com. Remember that this episode is just a small part of what the Impactful Parent offers. Also available are online courses, parent support groups, coaching services, and of course, the Impactful Parent app. So find out more at theimpactfulparent.com. But until next time, you got this. I'm just here to help. Thank you.